out there in video land. This is Julian Chambliss again here to talk about The 100, the book I'm working on that looked at the 100 greatest African-American comic book characters in the U.S. As I mentioned to you before, um, my last video, I talked a little bit about creating the corpus. And of course, I talked about something ultimately that did not make the list, the Gunhawks. <laughs> but of course, um, putting together that list does mean that I get a chance, as I mentioned before, to talk about uh, comic book characters, of African-American descent that have been created in different periods, right? So as I mentioned in my very first video, there are some sort of dominant periods of creation associated with comic book characters. And that makes a lot of sense uh, with characters like the Black Panther being created in 1966. There are earlier characters, you know, all Negro comics, which appeared in 1947, an anthology that had some really sort of classic characters that fit within that anthology mode. Or, you know, newspaper comic strips even before that. So you look at a character like Speed Jackson who appeared in um, Chicago Defender and uh, Pittsburgh Courier and Torchy Brown. Um, Jack Ormond is this very famous character. So there's plenty of black characters that appeared before that 1960s date with the comic book characters. But again, during the comic strips and not comic books, right? So like definitions do matter in this particular project. And so that gets me into this place where I have to like go through and look at something like Gun Hawks and go, should this be on the list? Ah, no. Uh, but those that does mean that I also get an opportunity to look, look at the independent comic book market and recognize that there, of course, have been some real innovations in the presentation of comic books that have appeared since that 1960s, 1970s period. And this is really important when we think about the emergence of the alternative comic book market, the indie comic book market of the 19, late 1970s and 1980s. Of course, identity is really important in the emergence of what uh, Charles Hatfield has described as alternative comics, right? The comics with an X, uh, which is really connected to sort of political, social, and economic transformations in the United States. A lot of these comics, uh, originally the underground comics especially, we're not necessarily uh, ripe with positive representation of people of color or women, right? So there's been a lot of work that sort of delved into misogynist and racist imagery we might associate with, with these comics. But the reality is that when we started to get into the 1980s, we do start to see the emergence of independent comic book creators of color who are creating stories that are really grounded in their experience and grounded in their worldview, right? So a really famous example of this, of course, is Love and Rockets. Uh, which really sort of captures the kind of Southern California Latinx experience. Or we can think about some of the comic books that started to emerge in the late 1980s and early 1990s. They're really sort of like driven by black comic creators, right? Of course, uh, always when we think about this period, Milestone Comics leaps to mind because of their uh, innovative agreement with DC Comics and the line of comics with writers like Dwayne McDuffie and artists like the Dennis Cowan, really sort of create this whole universe of black characters, but really characters, not just simply black characters, really a whole range of characters, but we kind of remember it as a black comic book company, and that's not exactly right. I mean, they are black, but their characters are black and white and Latinx and other things too. Uh, but we also laud them for their great storytelling techniques and their great sort of like complexity of the world they create in Dakota. But even... In that, there's a lot of diversity in that moment in the early 19, late 80s, early 90s. And one of the characters that really sort of like defines this and it really sort of stand out success that makes the list is a character like Brother Man, right? So if you look at uh, Brother Man, what you see is a real independent comic success, right? This is created by really a group of, of brothers, a real family operation uh, with Guy Sims being the writer, uh, and Dawu Alimbale, uh as the artist, he's, he changed his name. But if you look at this sort of original text, it's like the Sims brothers. Like Jason is their uh, sort of production manager, uh, and the brothers Guy and David are producing the comics. And this really is a comic that makes its debut in the Black Comics Expo, and um, I think 1990 is is the date. And this is another one of those comics that's really seminal for a lot of black comic book creators. If you've ever seen that great documentary by Jonathan Gales, um, White Scripts and Black Superman, uh, he's done a, a number of uh, shorter films sort of detailing the emergence of the independent comic movement in the late 80s and early 90s. He has a great short film on Brother Man. And for uh, scholars and uh, artist Brother Man was like a, a phenomenon. Is a comic that was really 
So almost exclusively uh, outside the sort of traditional distribution channels, you can find Brother Man in those places where you can find black people, as, as a lot of the, the commentary sort of points out. Like you could get it at black bookstores, get it at barbershops. And it was an alternative format, right? As you can see, it was a, a sort of magazine-sized black and white comic that came out on a sort of bi-monthly basis. And if you read these sort of collected editions, which are really kind of hard to get these days, uh, you can see that the immediate response from readers was like positive. So when we think about the impact of that independent comic movie, sort of black creators, Brother Man is a standout. And I think when I look at it, and especially in the context of this project, it's gotten me to think a lot about how uh, the sort of black uh, comic creative voices really shaped um, future generations from that 1990s period. So Brother Man makes the list, and I urge you, if you have an opportunity, sort of check it out and check out really a whole world of independent comic book Char uh, characters that are created by people of color that are a lot easier to find today than they were uh, decades ago in the early 1990s when they first had this sort of like big push. So keep that in mind. I'll be back with you talk more about The 100 um, coming up.